What on Urgath is this? All right. Let them bring this to Zeramak. They must complete the devouring before sundown. It will all work out. Grangwa feels it. Magwa smiles upon them. <laughs> Wonderful. Then what could go wrong? <sighs> Why, Zaska? Why must he always blaspheme? Zaska knows how difficult his role in the tribe is. He wants he everyone to shun him. Wait, Zaska's jokes are why they like him not? He always thought they were just jealous of his pretty face. Zaska's face no pretty? Or is? Mugwa's miraculous udders. If only Noag knew. <laughs> All the does are itching to mate with Zaska. Zaska is avoiding the question. No, Zaska is just not in the mood for being questioned by an old ailing troll. Fine. If Zaska wants to stay an outcast among kin, then so be it. Just say not that Grangwa tried not to help him. Sure. Pure, holy elder Grungwa Oldfur only wanted to help. What is wrong with Zaska? He has been vexed for days now. Must be the weather. Has it to do with the scheming Nurbok accused Zaska of? Magwa's others, no. Now can they please just get back to what they were doing? Zazka can blaspheme all he likes, but he should not disrespect Grungwar. He must apologize, now. Leave it, Chieftain. Nothing he has said is untrue. Grungwar is old, and Grungwar is ailing. No true. Grungwar strong warrior, like Nerbark. <clears throat> that time is long past. Either way, let them move on. What is ah, that? Chieftain back? Good, good. What he need? Akrog needs Zeramak to shape something. To crush things. What he need? Old hide, he have it still. Here, Chieftain, Mugwa's tooth. Mm. Akrog thanks, Zeramak. To Cabrax, then. Oh, and Zeramak scrappers can search the cave now. It is safe. Chosen chieftain returns. Has he the tooth yet? Akrog has it. <laughs> Let Cabrak see. Here. Will this do? Mm, it should. Follow them inside. Let Grog. Well then. Time for the preparations. The summoning of Mugwa's cub. <laughs> no need to look like a beak shat on his head, Akrog. Summoning Mugwa's cub is a great honor. He should be smiling. A 
A moonkin and a bonekin have to die for the ritual. Akrog sees nothing to smile about, and he understands not why Cabrax would. Cabrax told him why. It is an honorable way to die. Being worked to death as a slave of the Greenskins? Disgrace. Starving? Disgrace. Untusked by a brittle bone? Disgrace. But giving one's blood so that Mugwa's cub can take the fabled chieftain Narjak firstborn into the moonlit river? That is an honorable way to die. A way worthy of Mugwa's spawn. Kabrak speaks true. Arnok's trusted one will have dark thoughts for a long time. But maybe he will find solace in the thought that Arnok will be floating in the moonlit river right beside Narjak. It is a great honor. Arnok... die? Why? So Noag's sire can go in peace, and trusted one Akrog can be the new chieftain. Zazka will explain to Noag, but not now. <sighs> the Bloodgivers are already here, are they not? What else is needed? Prepare the rest of the offering, of course. Wood, food, and crushed stone. Tradition demands for the Devoured One's tribe to gather them. But if Akrog wants, the Bone King can do it instead. He knows the Moonkin are weary. If the Bonekin could harvest the offering, Akrog would be grateful. Of course. All right. The workers are preparing the offering. The Moonkin thanked the Bonekin. What is next? Scrap. Just have the Moonkin scrappers search the cradle. There should still be some mounds nearby. Then comes the blood giving. How works the blood giving exactly? Two blood givers must offer their lives to Mugwa. Zaska knows that. But how? It is complicated. Of the two blood givers, one is the sacrifice, and the other, the vessel. The vessel devours the sacrifice then spills his own blood at the foot of the Holy Stone. Hmm. Elder Grumwar Grafer is as wise as they say. What mean devour? Eat. So he means the vessel must eat the sacrifice's flesh? Like chosen chieftain Akrog will eat his sire's flesh of the ceremony. It is true. Cabrax told both Bloodgiver Urnok the sacrifice and Bloodgiver Itzka, the vessel, what they should do. Akrog should speak to them once he is ready to make the offering. He will. Sharp tusks and thick hide. What should he do? Interesting. Probably. Close enough. What is it? Bloodgiver Itzka. 
will give his life tonight. He wishes not to die with the rot in his bones. <sighs> the rot can only be passed on through blood, not from troll to troll. That is what every fool believes. Itka wants his flesh to be pure when he offers it to Mukwa. No. Why is the chosen chieftain speaking to Itzka? He wants to be alone with his thoughts. Akrog came to offer his thanks and tell Itzka that the ritual is ready. Thanks? Itzka does this for Mugwa, not for the Moon King. But he thanks. Akrog for his words. Is the blood guard waiting? Blood guard? Kabrax has not told him yet. The tradition demands that the Moonkin bring three strong warriors to protect the pyre. Akrog understands. He will take care of it. He should. Itzka will meet him at the Holy Stone. Why, Ernok? Because that is chosen chieftain Akrog ground splitter. Mugwa prays. Mugwa prays, Bloodgiver Arnok Softtusk. Is he ready for the sacrifice? Bloodgiver. All his life, Ernok was a healer. And now that is all he is. He became Bloodgiver the moment Mugwa decided so. Rot Mugwa! Rot the devouring! Rot the hunters! Rot everything! Nurab! Nurab cannot take this! Nurab! Nurab, go! <sighs> Just when Anuk has accepted his fate, his trusted one will not. What can he do, chosen chieftain? He wants not to leave Nurab like this. Bitter and broken. The last hunter attack killed dozens. Many kin are bitter and broken. How about a soul charm? It is a stone with hex power from the brittle bone ruins here. It can store the voice of a living creature. If the moonkin found a soul charm for Anuk, he could speak a few words for Norab into it. This way, Norab could treasure them forever. That, uh... Anuk would like that. But he wants not to be a burden on the tribe. Nerbak is right. The Moonkin should not stay here any longer than necessary. Anuk gives his life for the devouring. So this is the least the Moonkin can do. The blood for the tribe. The tribe for the blood. Hmm. Anuk thanks, Grungwa. Where can they find the soul charm? Cabrax told Grungwa that the kin hoard them. They should talk to their Thing Keeper. Hmm. All right. They will be back. Find out. <clears throat> Mugwa prays. 
He is Chosen Chieftain Akrog Groundsplitter. Thingkeeper Neek knows him. The Troll who uses the power of nature in battle. How knows he? Oh, be no fool. Every Troll knows the cub of Chieftain Narjak Firstborn. And his same blood, the Moonblood. Neek must say he expected something else. Akrog looks chieftain to me. <laughs> Let alone the one to follow Narjak Firstborn. Akrog cares not about Neek's judgment. He is here for something else. <laughs> Just as Neek thought. Too cowardly to stand his ground. Either way, what came he here for? Akrog wonders if the Bonekin have a soul charm. The Moonkin's blood giver, he would like one for... Well, his trusted one. Soul charm? The brittle bone boxes that can trap a voice, no? It is true. They are small spheres, silver like the moon, and... Neek knows what they look like, and it is true. They have one, here. What wants the Bonekin in return? Nothing. The Moonkin Bloodgiver makes a great sacrifice. If this keeps the dark thoughts away from his trusted one, Neek is glad to help. Akrog thanks Neek. Sharp tusks and thick hide. This is the Bonekin's treasure, is it not? Why keep so many brittle bone things? So the brittle bones find them not. Everything out there with hex power is a thing the brittle bones can use to untusk trolls. Akrog understands. Akrog must leave. What this? Chosen Chieftain. Here. The Bonekin gave Akrog this soul charm. Hmm. Anuk likes it. How works it? Anuk just speaks something? And the hex inside will trap it. It is true. Hmm. Anuk sees. Anuk is with Magwa now. And he will be there when Nurab joins him in the Moonlit River. Will he bring Nurab the Soul Charm now? Hmm. Anok would like Akrog to bring it to him. After the devouring, when Anok is... gone. Why? Nurab, his trusted one! Very true, Moonblood Noag. But seeing Nurab now would... only make Anok weak again. He has said all that needed to be said. Now, it is time for him to do his duty. The tribe for the blood. The blood for the tribe. Chosen Chieftain Akrog. Anuk. Make all this death mean something. Save the Moonkin. No matter the price. No one here! Grunwa will go there. Chosen Chieftain, has he spoken to the Bloodgivers? He has. Good. Then the summoning may start. First, Dakrog will have to place the offering at the Holy Stone. Then... Well... Then the vessel must devour the sacrifice then spill his blood at the foot of the Holy Stone. Once this has been done, Mogwa's cub will rise from the earth. Will Kabrax guide the ritual? 
No, this is the Chosen Chieftain's burden, and his alone. Akrog understands. What is that? Chosen Chieftain. Is it time? Anok is ready. And Itzka is too. It is time. This is the tooth. Strange. What is? That it would end this way. Anok thought about how he would die so much. Yet. This. It never crossed his mind. Itzka will honor Ernok's flesh. Hmm. Akrog will be a good chieftain. Anok feels it. Sharp tusks and thick hide. May Mugwar bless this meal. Speak the words, then Itzka will do his duty. Going now. You find out. By the golden shiny holy hide. Tell Cabrox not. This is not beautiful, Akrog. Tell him not. Will it? Akrog means whose words obeys it. Chosen chieftain Akrog's, of course. He summoned it. Then the devouring can begin. It is true. Speak the words, then Cabrax will light the pyre. If he wants to take a last look at his sire's flesh, it should be now. 
Is Akrog ready? He is. Then call in the Moon King's chosen warriors. Cabrax will brew the embalming liquid. Then the devouring begins. And so, Elder Grungwa Grafer gives Chieftain Narjak Firstborn's flesh to his cub, the Chosen Chieftain. Not only so he may become the new Chieftain, not only so his blood stays in the tribe forever, but to honor Magwa, the Moon Goddess, who through all these struggles still smiles on troll kind. Magwa prays. Do it, chosen chieftain. Devour the heart. And the devouring is complete. With Magua's blessing, Accra Ground Splitter is now Chieftain of the Moonkin. Speak, Chieftain. Speak loud and speak proud because his words will be remembered. Narjak Firstborn was not only Akrog's sire, he was also the greatest chieftain of- Wait! What? Something... something is wrong. They- Hunters! This is pointless! The Moon King must flee! Now! What is he talking about? The trolls will crush them! No! They will not! Tusks! There are hundreds of them out there! Cabras can sense it! And they killed the cub with a single hex! He speaks true, Chieftain. They need to flee. But how? The fire is everywhere. Cabrax knows a way. Zazbun, what happened? Where are they? Still near the cradle. This must have been a teleport hex, like the hunters used to get into the cradle. They... More hunters. 
Cabrax was right. To the tribe camp. Now. I hope that spell worked. That thing was bloody terrifying. Don't worry, it will. Etras is the best mage in the core. Still, it is a titan. And that fight has been going on for a while now. Ah, you worry too much. Those tusks are ours. Destroy them! Ellen's reigns! No more cross hunters! Is that blood giver Anuk's trusted one, Norab? He will never get the soul charm. To the tribe camp. Now. Ah, oh, tusks. He is going. Who has arrived? Nurbok told Akrok this would happen, but he listened not. Stop, Nurbok. This is not the time for fighting. Krum speaks true. The hunters, how many kin have they killed? Better to ask how many were not killed. They have not yet counted the bodies, Chieftain Akrok. But it is terrible. Zaramak, Julog, Anug, Krum, and maybe two dozen kin are all who survived. It would have been worse had Anuk not warned Nurbok. That... that terrible... It is, little Noag. It is. Akrog understands not. The eyes said there were no hunters wide and far. So how could this happen? I, Master Anuk? It's... it is hard to explain. It is true that the beaks and the eyes see no hunters. But when Anuk go out yesterday, he see these strange sparkles in the air. Like how air look over a fire. This morning, Anuk and I see sparkles from the bushes. But suddenly, there is a blue cloud on the sparkles and hunters come out. A teleport hex. Just like in the cradle. Mm -hmm. When Anuk find out, he run back to the tribe camp, but it was too late. He is sorry, Chieftain Agrog. He failed the tribe, and now so many kin is dead. Anuk is not to blame. It was Akrog who would not listen. Chieftain Akrog. Mm. The small tusk is the last one to tell Nurbok what to do. He is not even a moon quiet. Tusks, maybe Akrog made a mistake, but now is not the time to fight. Kin died, again. And more will die if the Moonkin stay here and wait for the hunters to finish crushing the cradle. They need to leave. Now. Powerful words. And where plans this great leader to take the Moonkin? Right into the next ambush? He knows not, but they will work something out. Maybe there is no need to. Zazka has an idea. Nurbok remembers when he said Zazka was making schemes again? Well, it is true. For the past moon, he has been meeting with a brittle bone. A brittle bone? That is what Zazka just said. And no, he has not betrayed them. Even though that is what they all believe he is just waiting to do. This brittle bone, he has a plan that would not just help the tribe crush the hunters, but could also cure the rot. Cure the rot? How? How is that possible? And there is the catch. The Moonkin must resurrect a fallen god. 
Grungwa. Ever since they crossed the water to start a new life on Urgath, Mugwa had smiled upon her trolls. In their darkest times, though, her smile was sometimes forgotten. The blood rot, the hunters, the slavers. They were not so easy to forget. But as long as Mugwa was smiling, there was hope. Disbelief marked the faces of surviving Moonken as Asuka explained his idea. A pact with a brittle bone elder? Resurrecting a fallen god? Disgrace, they roared. Madness! But was there any other choice? So it was that Akrog used the chieftain's word for the first time. The Moonkin would meet this strange brittle bone in the Blackheart jungle for a peace talk. When they marched to the cradle five sundowns ago, the Moonkin had been bleeding. When they abandoned it to the hunters, the wound was wide, wide open. Hmm. This is it. The brittle bone stranger is nearby. I know still think it is not wise to go alone. Take a few beats, at least. Akrog agreed to a peace talk. And brittle bones honor peace talks not. They say they will. Then they stab each other in the back. Maybe so. But this brittle bone had a hundred chances to crush Zaska. And he crushed him not. Also, if he is anywhere near as powerful a hexer as Zaska thinks, a few beaks will make no difference. Please, Akrog. If they break the first pack they struck with the stranger, he might choose not to help them after all. The tribe has been ravaged, and they cannot ruin this chance. Zaska speaks true, Chieftain. Trust must start somewhere.
probably. Well, well. Look what the jungle brought to me. So? You are the chieftain Zaska told me about. Curious. He is Akrog Groundsplitter, chieftain of the Moonkin. A pleasure to meet you, chieftain. I must say, I can't help but be impressed at your level of speech. Where I come from, people still believe trolls are all about grunting and roaring. But let's not beat around the bush, shall we? How much has Zaska told you about my proposal? Akrog knows not the stranger's name yet. That's true, and I would rather have it stay this way. Nothing personal, just precaution. Fine. The stranger can keep his secrets. Much obliged. So, tell me, how much has Zaska told you? Magua has given many troll tribes the power to speak. Brittlebones just choose to ignore it. That is the goddess you worship, isn't it? I see. All that he knows. The stranger wants to bring a dead god back to life. And he needs the Moonkin's help to do it. Imprisoned, not dead. But, yes, that about sums it up. Let's start from the beginning. After the first battles between the Dark and Light races, which would lead to the War of the Six, many of Trolls, Dark Elves, and Orcs fled to Urgarth to recover. The Moon can know about the escape. That is how their ancestors came to Urgarth. The last chieftain, he was one of them. Narjak Firstborn, I'm aware. And this is not a history lesson. I'm telling you this because of the creature that led the escape. Zarek's cub, the field dog. What has it to do with anything? It went back to Fiara after the escape hundreds of years ago. Yes, that's what most believe, even among the light races. The truth is, the Hibernian Empire sent a division of elite warrior priests after them. The Sacred Seal. They tracked down the field dog and locked it away deep inside a prison here on Urgarth. I believe that prison is on the other side of this swamp. And I also believe that while the priests of the Sacred Seal are long dead, the Field Arg is still there. How knows the stranger all this, if no one else does? Such a curious troll. How refreshing. First, I have access to records most other people do not. Second, for the past five years, I did little else but study these records. Hmm. If those Hibernians could trap Zarek's cub, why not kill it? They were lightlings, no? It is true. Maybe they were not able to. My thinking exactly. It would have been in their interest to kill the field dog, and I'm fairly certain that was their original mission. But something must have prevented them. Mm. This makes no sense. Zarek's cub, the field dog, it is a god. Nothing can harm it. Demigod. And yes, it's true that a field dog can't be killed by conventional means. I'm assuming that's why the priests of the Sacred Seal imprisoned rather than killed it. Hmm. Hibernians. They are the brittle bones on the land across the sea, no? They used to be. The Hibernian Empire fell some time ago. It fell? Oh, Grumwar knew not. Well, how would you? The only things that travel between Urgarth and Fiara are fortune seekers and mercenaries like the ones who hunt you. And the stranger wants to free Zarek's cub. 
hoping that will gain him and the Moonkin his favor. That is his idea, no? That is correct. Zaska told me of your scourges, Chieftain. The Rot, the Hunters. There is no way you'll wrestle down those foes on your own, but with the help of a demigod? That would turn the tables. Hmm. What thinks Grungwar of this? He thinks it is a bad idea. Even if this temple exists, and even if betting the last Moonkin warriors on this strange plan would not be madness, who is to say the cub would even help them if they break its shackles? Zarek has never cared for the trolls. He made them slaves, arrow fodder for the greenskins to toss at their enemies. For all they know, the cub would simply devour the whole tribe and leave. Better to be eaten by a god than be untusked by a brittle bone. The stranger speaks true, Grumar. They have no choice. Even if the hunters stop tracking them down, the rot will still keep killing Moonkin cubs before they are even born. What will Grungwar do about that, hmm? They have Noag. He has the Moonblood. It will be many years before Noag can mate. And even if he were to sire a thousand cubs, how would the tribe feed them while they were little? Please, Akrog. They have tried running. They have tried hiding. But it never worked. Just this once. Let them do, and not be done to. Fine. They will take a look at this temple, then they will decide what to do next. Akrog has spoken. The stranger says this temple is here in the jungle? Yes, I can show you. There's just one thing we need to take care of first. The Chainers. Those green-skinned slavers? Yes. A small troll tribe lived here. And the Chainers rushed through the jungle a few days back and enslaved them. The main group is gone, but there are still a few troops left. And they have set up their cow right in front of the temple. I know your ranks have been decimated, but you should be able to take them on, especially with the element of surprise. Finally, there's another matter we should take care of before we move into the temple. So, these brittle bones in the temple, the sacred seal, the stranger said they died. What happened to them? That's a mystery I'm hoping to solve once we're inside. Whatever it was, Grungwar is sure the cub played a role in it. Grungwar, what tribe could these trolls belong to? Mud crawlers or bog tusks, probably. They are the only ones who live this deep in the jungle. Akrog never heard of those before. What are their bonds to the Moonkin? Probably not enemies. They honor Magwa's law. So how could they possibly be bad trolls? Hmm. Well, they should still be careful. One more thing. Why needs the stranger, the Moonkin, for this? If he is as powerful a hexer as Zaska says, could he not free the cub on his own? A fair question. Suffice it to say that breaking into an ancient temple has its own unique challenges, where the muscle of your kind would come in quite handy. That is all, then. The stranger needs someone to crush rocks for him. Well, not quite. It's also about safety. That temple has stood abandoned for centuries, so it's bound to be crawling with all kinds of vermin and undead. I thought about hiring a mercenary corps, but they are expensive, attract a lot of attention, and will probably stab you in the back the moment they sniff a gain to be made. I know this probably isn't the answer you wanted to hear, but it's the truth. Hmm. What is this other matter? Well, it's related to the creatures of this lovely jungle. Briefly put, some kind of disease seems to be making the rounds, and it makes creatures go mad, docile and predator alike. A disease, perhaps? If so, then it's no ordinary one. It also seems to spread. I've seen more and more animals like this. 
Considering you have a tribe to feed, you should probably put down those cursed animals whenever you see them. Otherwise... They might corrupt the entire hunting grounds. The stranger speaks true. The Moonkin will take care of it. What about the stranger? Will he help the Moonkin fight? I would, but something tells me I should save my strength for when we find the temple. I will do some scouting in the meantime. There are a couple of things out here I have yet to look into. Fine, if you must. And one more thing. Akrog decided to trust the stranger. Make him not regret it. <laughs> Don't worry. I cannot guarantee any of this will work. But I will stay true to my word. Good luck now. We'll speak once you've dealt with the Chainers. What did he do? And... gone. A teleport hex, like the Hunters used. It is true. Well then, let them take a look at this tribe camp to see what the Moonkin are up against. They will bring the others when it is safe. Well, even though there is no way the Moonkin could have known about the Hunters, Nurbok was right about the Cradle. Akrog wants his advice. Hmm. Nurbok thinks the small tusk is right. Wonders never cease. Nurbok thinks not that it is wise to put the fate of the tribe into a brittle bone's hands. But it is true if this stranger had wanted to kill the Moonkin, he could have done it when they were not expecting it. Also, Akrog has made up his mind, and the Moonkin are already here, so they might as well go through with it. Stop the club not in the middle of a swing. It is Chieftain now, Nurbuk, not Akrog. Sure. Chieftain. All right. Anuk, make camp here and bring in the others. If they are not back by sundown, find the stranger and crush him. Akrog has spoken. Huh. As Chieftain say. Good then. Grungwar, Zaska, Little Blood. Come. Time to find out what this stranger's wild plan is. Huh. What now? More trouble? Big Blood? Hmm? The Hunters. They killed the Bonekin, no? Big Blood think they... Untusk, sire. They probably did, but it changes nothing. Magwa took him into the Moonlit River when the devouring was complete. Interesting. 